Hello friends, in this video I'm going to do something different, something I've never done before. I'm going to be reacting to the Unreal Engine 5.1 feature highlights video. I'm going to be talking through each of the features that is mentioned and how I think it's going to be useful for me and hopefully you. So let's take a look. The latest release of Unreal Engine builds upon the groundbreaking Love this guy. set released in UE5 to add a new level of robustness, efficiency, and accessibility Got some cyberpunk with the needs going of on different here. sectors in mind. Here are just some of the highlights of Unreal Engine 5.1. First up, we've laid the groundwork for Lumen, Nanite, and Virtual Shadow Maps to support games and experiences running at 60 FPS on next-gen consoles and capable PCs. Capable PCs. This is a very strategically chosen way to say it because a lot of these features are incredibly efficient, which is true. Lumen is incredibly efficient. Nanite is incredibly efficient. But you need a certain level of hardware to you know, fully take advantage of some of these features. If you're interested in kind of the minimum specs that you need, like absolute minimum, I've made a video which I'll link to that kind of covers like I said, absolute minimum specs that you need to start with Unreal Engine. But as you start to use some of these tools, you'll you'll kind of start to feel out what technical limitations you have from your PC. But I think for the most part, I've been pretty happy with how we've gained more features and they've become more efficient over time. Lumen looks almost as good as ray tracing at this point, but is much less taxing on your computer, which is incredible. So just wanted to call that out so fast-paced games and simulations can run without latency. Nanite has been updated with a programmable rasterizer to allow for material-driven animations and deformations via world position offset, as well as opacity masks. This is huge. This is maybe one of my favorite things coming to the engine here because a lot of stuff worked really well with Nanite. You know, like if you have a huge scene with a lot of rocks and canyons and buildings and stuff like that, worked really well with Nanite. But unfortunately, foliage did not. And we still got this very video gamey looking effect where you'd have the foreground uh, grass or whatever it is looking very good and in the distance it would revert to a lower LOD level which which just means a level of detail but it's the old way that Unreal Engine used to hand and many game engines used to handle making your environments more efficient so the further away from camera they would get it would switch and then sometimes you'd see these pop where it switches to a much lower res version of the asset to maintain performance but now Nanite works with foliage which is incredible because you'll you won't have this popping in and out foliage in the background switching to these kind of ugly looking cards um i have another video as well talking about this particular feature as well as my favorite features from this release and how to actually use them so i'll link that video as well but this is probably my absolute favorite feature that in this update it's so powerful it will change a lot of of natural scenes for the better and you just switch it on it's really not difficult. Here we're using it to animate leaves blowing in the wind on nanite-based foliage. In this release, we've continued to enhance tools for building massive open worlds. New hierarchical level of detail support for water rendering and streaming means you can create large water bodies with better performance and a smaller memory footprint. This is pretty helpful. I've done some large water body based scenes and you do definitely run into some artifacting in the distance. And it's really nice to see them taking the ocean water system that was new to, uh, I, did it come last year? I can't remember now, but it, it's fairly recent, fairly new. So it's nice to see that they've continued to iterate on that particular tool because I find it incredibly powerful for creating large environments and scenes that involve oceans or lakes. Uh, the theme of a lot of these features is just better world building, which is something that goes into not just games, but also filmmaking. Like I tend to use Unreal Engine 4, so this is huge. And here, we're using World Partition with the newly supported Large World Coordinates, enabling us to create a massive open world without loss of precision. World Partition also features better source control workflows, just one of the new features for improved developer efficiency, which also include virtual assets for faster and more efficient data syncing, pipeline state object caching for DX12, and on-demand shader compilation. 
Unreal Engine 5. So for those of you who are individuals using this, this is going to come in less into play because we're talking here about source control, which is if you haven't already used it, Git or um, Plastic or some of these source control things, they're basically allowing teams to merge code over the internet. So you have a local version of your in environment or your assets and you're syncing them up to a cloud version and it's checking the differences and people have different branches, so different versions of the assets that they're working on. So you can run into difficulty sometimes with people overwriting each other's assets or bottlenecks because you can't work on a particular level because only one person can work on it at a time so they've already they've already released some features allowing for different layers within levels which is super helpful so this is kind of extending some of those extra features for larger teams not something i personally use on a daily basis but i i do work with people who do use it and i know this is going to be huge 5.1 sees significant improvements in performance and usability for in-camera vfx workflows that apply equally to the broadcast and live events space Stage operators get a new dedicated in-camera VFX editor tailored to their specific tasks such as light card placement and editing on in-display walls. It also provides access. This is just some tools for virtual production. So you're an LED wall that's displaying a rendered Unreal Engine environment and you're tracking the camera looking at that environment and you have a real camera looking at that LED screen or green screen sometimes you have the you're tracking that camera that camera is connected to a virtual camera that's also basically a twin of that camera so that when you move the camera in real space it's moving the background so that it looks like you are actually shooting the actual virtual environment and then on top of that you have the footage from that camera coming back so you can composite and do different things with it visual effects so I mean the Mandalorian obviously was a huge deal that it used used this technology to to create a lot of the shots as well as a lot of the Marvel shows are using this as this is a really exciting new technology that's who these updates are for but some of the tools are helpful for individuals like myself as well because for example this one access to new color correction tools He's kind of skipped over this. I will link in the video in the description for actually how to use this color correction tool because I really like it, but it is, you know, a regional color correction. So you can create a sphere or a square in this case and do spot corrections on different areas in your environment. And what's new about this one is that it's, it doesn't have to be overlapping with objects, but it's just going to color correct everything behind it, which is really cool. That's kind of, that's new for this update. The virtual camera system is now more responsive and reliable and features an updated UI with a modern camera focused design and adding an EXR movie. I really like this update as well because the camera app was usable before the iPad camera app, but it was kind of slow and there were, it was pretty buggy. Actually the update for Unreal Engine 5, I believe even some of the buttons were broken. I'm pumped for this. I use this a lot because I use my iPad to animate my camera and make it feel like it's intentional and animated by humans. So this is really good for me. Movie file to a level or sequencer is now just a matter of drag and drop from the content browser. This is, that's interesting. I used footage within Unreal Engine before and it's a little convoluted in the past because you have an image sequence reading into your environment and then you have a media player. The, play, the media player is playing the sequence, which is then, it, there's like three blueprints you need to like play footage. So that's pretty nice that it's more streamlined and it makes me wonder if I will experiment more with using live footage I've shot within my virtual environments, if it's a lot easier to just kind of drop stuff in, use their green screen here and kind of just basically do 3D compositing within my environments. I think it's something worth looking into. I'll probably make a video later about that as well. Character animators have plenty to look forward to in this release. The machine learning deformer lets you generate high fidelity approximations of deformation rigs from Maya that execute in real time in UE. This is crazy. I mean, this I, I have a background in character animation in Maya specifically, and some of the stuff that they're able to do in real time here is it's wild. It's wild. That was probably the thing that was the most frustrating for me as an animator was the speed of the rigs I was using. I could animate, I could do so much more work if the rig itself was just more real time, more smooth. So this, this is really amazing to see what they're able to do in real time. On another front, Control Rig continues to expand toward fully procedural rigging. 
Now you can create a single control rig asset and use it for characters with different skeletal proportions and properties. Improvements to sequence. That's pretty cool. I've not rigged in Unreal Engine yet, but I probably will need to at some point. Sequencer includes support for constraints. Ah, thank you. Can easily create and animate relationships between any control rig or actor. Oh my gosh. This is really, you need this to, to do character animation. This is like the basic thing that you have to, like picking up objects, they need to snap to your hand. Like that's really helpful. Like just imagine animating a character reaching down to the, the table and picking up a pencil. Are you animating the pencil and the hand to somehow? The only way to make that look convincing is if the moment your fingers make connection with the pencil, it switches to be parented to the hand now or vice versa, however you want to do it. So that when you move the hand, the pencil comes with it. Basic stuff, but this is kind of difficult to do in Unreal Engine before. So this is very helpful. <laughs> For example, making a camera always follow a character or keeping a character's hands on a steering wheel. Enhancements to the modeling tool set include new functions for geometry scripting, UV editor improvements to handle more complex assets, and a new pattern tool that lets you tile one or more selected meshes along a line, grid, or circle oriented on a movable 3D plane. I have not had too much experience with the modeling tools. I think that's kind of a blind spot for me. I've used it like once or twice, but this is actually really helpful because I always have this one question about when I will not have to use other 3D packages like Maya or like Blender to do, for example, laying out of UVs for things in a very intentional way. You know, that's something I have to do in Maya right now. And it's pretty cool now to see them updating those tools. I wonder if it is possible for me now to try not using Maya or Blender or any of these other 3D packages to do my more custom assets. I mean, I see a lot of tools here on the left side that I know will be useful, so I think we might be getting there soon. We'll see. I'm curious to see what the limitations are as I dive more deeply into it. Last but not least, Metasounds now offers additional node types, support for various multi-channel output formats, and enhanced usability. We've also introduced Soundscape, a plugin for procedural ambient sound generation. These are just some of the highlights of what's new in Unreal Engine 5. That's cool. I'm going to try that out. I don't really use sound within the engine right now. I always add sound later in my editing package, but I could see a future where all of your environment sounds are captured like you would capture them on location, which is that's what it should be. And so this is really cool to see more tools for that. It is not always easy to render it out with the sound correctly. So that that's often more of the problem. <laughs> I dot one. You can find out more on our what's new page where you'll also find a link to download the release if you're a new user. Otherwise it's available right from your Epic Games launcher. Enjoy. Thank you, I will. I hope you found this somewhat interesting or helpful to kind of parse through some of these updates and see how they might be useful to you. Again, I have linked below some videos about some of those features that I mentioned and how to use them. Overall though, I think it's a very exciting release and it cleans up a lot of gunk from 5.0 that needed to be updated. And it feels like more of a kind of a quality iteration than the complete refresh like 5.0 was. So super excited for these tools. I'm gonna to be jumping in and using a lot of them and continue to make videos about how to use them. So hit the subscribe button if you'd like to get those videos and give me a thumbs up if you liked this format and if you want more videos of me reacting to feature updates or other animation people have made, let me know. Have a great day.